dry out. So right here is where you can see that graph. Oh sure, so yeah. That's black walnut here, and that's English walnut there. Just uh, Tyvek tape, it's off brand because so it doesn't say Tyvek. But mm -hmm. This stuff is really important. You might not think, I thought, no, get away with not buying $12 roll plastic uh, tape. Right. But this stuff ha is so insanely sticky that when you have it as a form, like for instance, this board right here, I can just take that off mm -hmm. and pour this, and the epoxy won't shove the tape off because it's so sticky. You use any other tape, gray tape, blue tape. Box tape doesn't matter. It'll it'll blow your tape out and then eventually find a hole in the gap. But this Tyvek tape is just so 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 sticky that you can't do it. Nice. It resists the epoxy. I'm just gonna try and make a watertight seal, basically on the bottom and all the sides of this thing, and then we'll flip it over and pour it from the other side. Whenever I Whenever I overlap my tape, like especially right here, I've got a, mm -hmm. a little flappy. Yeah, yeah, so I'm gonna go clear above that. I mean, you gotta think water. You gotta think you're mm -hmm. literally making a reservoir. That epoxy's, that deep pour epoxy's so thin, it'll find any little crack and escape. Yeah, you wanna just go the extra mile. Right. Make sure that you get it. Even if the tape's a damn expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this last piece of tape, for this form, I'm just gonna hold it up. You know, a quarter inch or so. Now I can tie mm -hmm. my caulk into it, and now we have a reservoir. Gotcha. Do not use silicone with epoxy. There are a lot of YouTubers that do it, and they make it work, but epoxy and silicone are enemies. Gotcha. They hate each other. Epoxy will eat silicone. Okay. And also, epoxy won't stick to silicone. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people use it in their molds and stuff. I mean, yeah, it's flexible so your mold doesn't crack if you move it and stuff. Right. But I use caulk because I've had scenarios where the epoxy ate, I, I, I did a clear pour, mm -hmm. and the epoxy ate some silicone and it went up into my clear too far in where I couldn't cut it out. Right. I actually had silicone streaks Steeping inside it, my piece. Into it. Yeah. So, I went caulk. I, I swear up and down my caulk. It's way better. Way better. It turns hard, so when you machine off, it don't gum your paper, I mean, just everything is. Right, right. It's way better. So we're just gonna go ahead and dam up these, all these cracks. Gotta make a watertight dam. Basically dam this whole end off, so I'll go from like right here all the way over. Something like that. And we gotta flop it down quick too before it, before it dries. Push it down until it stops sliding around. Still,
up into shapes that are as close to squares as I can mm -hmm. and actually get a cubic inch volume measurement of what I got going on. Of here. what you have. So, I mean, it's it's almost a triangle, actually. Hey, look at that. It's down near a triangle. Right. Down there. So, I'm just going to do a, I'm going to do a eight and a half by eight inch square and mm -hmm. cut it in half. Cut. The only thing that's different on these two is the basically just the number. The that's it. The number. And then the this is yeah, ice, the ice thin or ice, ice, ice cast. cast. So there. Thicker that it'll always stick to the bottom and the edges. We gotta stretch them constantly. Now, as soon as it works together, it's nice and crystal clear. So, right now, the pigment is heavier than the resin is. So, if I mix it all in and I just pour it, a lot of it's gonna settle. It's not gonna have the, the metallic swirls and mm -hmm. crazy cold stuff going on. So we don't really need that much. I mean, probably that's a quarter teaspoon. So I'll probably get like maybe three quarters of a teaspoon. So with three of these, three of these puppies would be plenty, I think. And that's probably even way too much, but I want to make sure that when we go to fill the cracks, because that's going to be way less epoxy in the cracks, mm -hmm. I want those cracks to really stand out. Right. So you right. got to tent it accordingly. That's one thing with when you're trying to a reproduce something you've already done say you build a table that was two inches thick for a client it looks like like it looks and then mm -hmm. another client's like i love that but i want four inches your formula has to change because you're not going to use the same amount of pigment to epoxy ratio because it's going to be thicker to get mm -hmm. the same to get the same results so you're going to use less resin because it's going to be thick or less pigment because it's going to be thicker resin mm -hmm. right so it's, it's all about test samples whenever i do big big expensive jobs i'll do identical samples of thickness all that stuff to get it really locked in before right. i go and screw it up <laughs> roger dodger
So what are we doing here, Anthus? We are going to demold our previous support epoxy bore. So basically we're going to be taking off all this plastic, right? Yeah, for now we'll bash this border off, peel the masking tape we have on the sides and bottom, and then we'll get to shaping it down to size. Excellent. All right, fire away. up a little bit. Makes the glue really Metropolis. I'm actually just gonna try and work the cold down that 